uncovering corporate fraud. So under uncovering corporate fraud, there are five important things that we're going to discuss. First is the prevention and detection awareness for the fraud audit. Fraudulent activity is one of the greatest problems in many companies. Thus, business owners find ways to protect their company from illegal activity that mostly done by the employees. So, first, prevention awareness. So, here are ways of corporate fraud prevention. First is identifying corporate fraud. So, under identifying corporate fraud, there are three, which is... Uh, all corporate fraud falls into one categories. First, asset misappropriation, financial statement fraud, and corruption. So, so asset misappropriation is a common type of fraud. It is essentially thief, which is an employee steals or otherwise exploits the company resources. Common examples of this is stealing money directly, submitting false reimbursement claims to claim bogus expenses, and stealing non-cash assets. So second is corruption. So corruption is the second most common type of fraud. It occurs when an employee when when an employee uses their position or authority to influence business transactions for their benefit while viol violating their responsibility to the employer. So third one is financial statement fraud. Financial statement fraud is also called financial statement reporting fraud. This type of fraud involves purposefully omitting or misstating data in financial reports in order to mislead others about the company's financial position and performance. So the second one is know your employees and partners. So there are four First is employee attitude. So, so corporation can be have a thousands of employees, vendors, and partnerships. It's important to observe and listen to anyone who has any involvement in your corporation, as a person's behavior can sometimes indicate their intent to commit fraud. So first is employee attitude. So monitoring employee attitude and responding appropriately may minimize loss from fraud and improve workplace culture. The second one is employee behavior. Monitoring employee behavior like vacation balances, mandating days, days off, and even rotating employees to other jobs in the department can help prevent or expose corporate fraud. So so the third one is formalizing hiring. So formal hiring routine is must have for large corporations to prevent fraud. A formal processing is consistent consisting of background checks and security of past jobs will reduce the chances of bringing a former protester into the company. So the last one under know your employees and partners is know your vendors and partners. So you, you should also know your vendors and partners. Conduct regular uh, audits of new vendors as billing scheme embezzlers set up and make payment of facility use vendors. So, so next we move on to next, create a news a reporting system. So there are three. So there there are three. It is important to set up a method or ideal multiple methods to report suspicious of fraud. So first is raise awareness. So raise awareness is frequent sources include employees, vendors, competitors, customers, the general public acquaintances of the fraudster. So don't so don't get to raise awareness for all parties as an internal posters for employees would won't be helpful or informative for the fraudster's spouse. For harness employees, raising awareness about a fraud reporting hotline will improve the likelihood that they use it. For these harness employees who are considering committing fraud, ongoing reminders about reporting suspicions will act as deterrent. So the next one is offer anonymity. 
So offer anonymity, someone hesitant to report fraud or get involved would benefit from the option of doing so anino, anin, anonymously. So next is log into every report. So it is important not only offer a whistleblowing hotline for tips, but only to follow up on a check and to every report. If you've, if you've implemented various reporting procedures, but fail to follow up, when whistleblowers do report their suspensions until all before nothing. If whistleblowers are doing their part by reporting for do yours by following up. And for public company failure to investigate a tape could result in fines and regulatory actions. So next is implement internal controls. So there are five. So one of the easiest ways to prevent fraud is to implement internal controls that make fraud harder to commit and easier to detect. The term internal controls generally refers to plans, program, or processes that are used to track and control and safeguard assets, financially integrity, and fraud detections. Internal controls work to prevent corporate fraud, but their visibility also acts as one of the best deterrents to fraudulent behaviors. So first is segregate duties. So under segregate duty, duties, it is a great method of internal control, which, which is consisting of separate handling functions from recording keeping functions, separate purchasing functions from payables functions, ensure that the, ensure that the same persons isn't authorized to write and sign a check require manager approval of time sh time sheets if you can separate duties require independent checks and last require two signatures above certain amounts so next is limit access so limit access Transparency is critical, but giving employees unlimited access to financial information, basically, is hacking for, is asking for trouble. So, so for the majority of employees, of employees, restrict access to financial account data, inventory assets, and checks. Look, I lack away cash check collections, credit cards, and financial account data, restrict the number of business credit cards and the number of users, set accounts limit just in case two. So the next is re um, require and review documentation. So keeping storing, keeping storing and reviewing documentation is a great method of corporate fraud prevention. Not only is it a deterrent when you have strict documentation rules, but it will also help stop a fraud scheme in its tracks. And last is train uh, train employees on the signs on the signs. So teaching employees to think before you click and be cautious and attentive to who they are communicating with we will help and we will help avoid any inadvertent leaks and private financial information. Employees in every area of the company should know fraud warning signs and how to report suspicions because these employees are working more closely with potential fraudsters than a CEO. They are more likely to see fraud firsthand and are your first line of defense. So last is to audit audit the books regularly. So in, in addition to document reviews, have an independent impartial person conduct a comprehensive audit for the books regularly. Require this person to routinely audit areas that deal in cash, refunds, product returns, inventory management, and accounting functions. Schedule occasionally and disclose audits in high risk critical business areas to help prevent fraud. Routine audits are great, but it gives for the start time and ability to better cover up their tracks. So next is detection awareness. So there are one, two, three, four, five. So first is detection, fraud detection by, by tip lines. 
An anonymous to tip line is one of the most effective ways to detect fraud in organizations. In order to, for tips to be independently investigated, it is desirable they, they go directly to an organization organizations internal auditor inspector general legal department or even to outside legal counsel for tip lines to be most effective or organizations should promote them and incorporate them into employee training for example some companies provide information about their tip lines and employee on employee pay stubs so next is fraud detection by external auditor auditors so American Institute Institute of Certified Public Accountants Professional Standards requires that financial statements auditors conduct their audits in such a way so as to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement, whether caused by fraud or error. Consequently, in some areas, in some cases, especially those with large losses and organizations, external auditors may detect fraud. The so third is fraud detection by internal auditors and inspector generals. An organization's internal auditor does, does a lot of the same type of work as an external auditor, but an internal auditor is concerned with all fraud rather than just the fraud that impacts the financial financial statement as such as internal auditor will likely discover some frauds as a routine part of internal audit auditing work further an internal auditor plays a key role in developing a system of fraud indicators so that suspicious activities are flagged and investigated finally internal auditors may be concerned with violations of the organization's policies and procedures and procedures even when they do not involve fraud so the fourth one is fraud detection by dedicated departments so wait wait class so many organizations have, have departments dev devoted to information security and fraud detection for example a bank may have an internal security department example loss management department devoted to customers account frauds such as departments may operate independently in their function area of functional areas or under the control of a chef information officer the controller or the internal auditor and that's all guys in the fraud detection by the department so let's move on to fraud detection by accident so passive fraud detection refers to cases in which the organization discovered a fraud by accident confession or unsolicited notification by another party fraudsters frequently make mistakes by falling to adequate cover the tracks for this reason efficient organizations will train their employees to spot and report irregularities so next is Next, the second one is the Uniform Occupational Fraud Classification. So, occupational frauds are those in which an employee's manager, officer, or owner of an organization commits fraud to determine of that organization. The three major types of occupational fraud are corruption asset misappropriation and fraudulent statements the complete classification of occupational fraud frequently referred to as a to us the fraud tree so here is the fraud tree class guys so this one is the corruption asset misappropriation and financial statement fraud so under corruption is conflict of interest very illegal and etc guys uh na shay kanang gimin sa uniform occupational fraud classification which is declassified uh, no under corruption asset misappropriation and financial and financial statement fraud so number three can distinguish between high and low fraud 
environment. Generally, high for the environment occurs when the organization is autocratic management. Autocratic management is, is the form of leadership that enables managers to make decisions unilaterally, unilaterally such as such leaders do not inquire about the consent and the consideration of subordinates and do whatever they feel is necessary in order to achieve a goal. So, the, so her, her asked the following are the personal and operating policies that, that contribute to high fraud environments. First is management by crisis. We get rules, high employee lifestyle expectations, poor Poor promotion opportunities. So, however, low fr low fraud environment occurs when there is a when when there is honesty, openness, and assistance. In fact, hiring honest people and having well understood and respected code of ethics are factors that cont contribute to creating a corporate culture of honesty and openness. Thus, having a good system of internal controls is usually the most effective tool in preventing and detecting fraud. So number four is another environmental red flag. So what is red flag? So guys, a red flag is a set of circumstances that are un unusual in nature or vary from the normal activity. It is a signal that something is out of the ordinary and may need to be in investigated further. Remember that red flags do not indicate guilt or innocence, but merely provide possible warning signs of fraud. So th these are the red flag warning signs of fraud. The first is missing documents, compliant, excess purchase, inventory shortage, excess voids or return checks, duplicate payments, rounded amount invoice, invoice, abnormal invoice volume, invoices just under appro approval amounts, mail drop address. That's I'm gonna, that's all guys. So last one is telltale signs of management corporate fraud so four till four so there are four telltale signs you need to you need a safety management system this type of approach to safety management is just one of the classic signs a company needs a safety management system so first is rising incident rates many companies struggling with high incident rates don't see measurable improvement until they implement an automotive SMS Guys, ang SMS kasi hindi na siya kung ano ha, mag-message siya, it is uh, no. uh, safety management system. Mga siya, guys. So, that's because of automatic system provides. So, close up loop or corrective action process to identify high-risk problems, resolve them quickly, and reduce the likelihood of re Recurrence, a centralized reporting platform gives you better visibility into risk and alert your problem in real time and before they happen. Comprehensive employee training to ensure staff is prepared to work safely on all times. So number two, compliance issues. So there are several aspects to the to the problems. So the opening compliance. Regulations and standards frequently change, making it difficult to keep up. There are literally thousands of individual requirements companies are responsible for complying with. Performing internal audit, audits ahead of compliance check is extremely time-consuming. So third is changing policies. An SMS helps to get everyone to the same page by centralizing policies in document control system, giving you the ability to launch employee training that includes testing or important news policies, making it easier to track issues that result from non-compliance with policies via corrective action workflows. So number four is multiple location or facilities. The last obvious sign on your your company needs an SMS is, is if, if you have multiple location or facilities, globalization and increasing business co complexity makes it difficult to stay on top of fixed issues and procedures on our organizational scale. Without any SMS to help you execute the details, your company will likely suffer from this joint disjointed or mismanaged processes as well as limited visibility and to the risk that pose the greatest threat. So there are the telltale sense of fraud in a company. So first is volatile reporting process, loopholes, data dumping, 
inconsistent data, delay in audits, abnormal behavior, abnormal behavior, facial independent person, facial independent personnel, ha ha haphazard in progress in process, and last one is the blame game. Mm, I think that's all, guys. I hope uh, I. But but before that, let me discuss this this one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine under two thousand of fraud in company. So first is first is is volatile reporting. So volatile reporting, guys. This sign is just uh, applicable to suppliers and contractors as it is to internal departments and function within the organization. Erratic, incomplete, late, or excuse laden management reporting is often a classic sign that, that something is wrong. So next guys is processing process loopholes is a weak security system is a result of ignorance over time. It is common occurrence occurrence if especially with especially when things get best busy, where precautions and risk avoidance measures get bypassed or ignored. There is a high risk of non-compliance with, with the right processes in place. In place, top level management are often filled into a full sense of security that they are actually being used. Being used. And third is dump data dumping a major indicator can be the act of the of the of detection a act of deletion or press pressure on staff to delete remove or otherwise dump past records following restructure a new division launch or or acquisition it will be an even bigger problem where international operations are involved as it's far harder to find or recreate evidence in a foreign and territory so next is inconsistent data so whether it is achieved data or cross-reference checks that are missing or wrong factual and inconsistent will will also occur naturally the cheats who seeks to defraud an organization will use the possibility to explain such inconsistencies and hide their fraud. So delay in audits. Excuses, confusions, or wild ghost, ghost chases when disclosing to auditors, be they internal or external, can be a telltale sign too. We need to remember, though, that the audit term is not there to find to find fraud, rather to ensure that the correct processes are in place that will deliver appropriate protection. So number six is abnormal behavior. This can range from acute defensiveness and resistance to attending review me meetings through to blaming strategies or even aggressions, aggressions when specific questions are asked about processes or figure. So next is uh, abnormal behavior. This can range from uh, acute defensive and resistance to attending review my meetings. I get a back no guys, sorry. So let's move on. Fishy independent personnel. So good non access provide and provide a considered independent and external perspective. Often they bring a specific expertise from outside the board's immediate experience and their skills can vary from financial knowledge to, to IT. So next is hard is haphazard in processes. Technic Technical staff working around the enterprise conducting unsupervised IT activity often outside normal hours can also be a worrying sign. Not every company is large enough to, f to have full IT department. So, and last one is to blame company. So, where people are given a little but without actual responsibility, it can effectively cover many things. So, many things. But what is going with those? How it's related to a power situation. So that's all. Thing. That's all, guys. And thank you.
Thank you. Hello, I am Zaina Imandang. My topic is recognizing employee fraud. What is employee fraud? Employee fraud occurs when an employee commits a fraud against their employer. The employer may be in any forms of businesses including a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, organization, and so on. So we have here common types of employee fraud. Thief of cash, unauthorized billing, money transfers and overpayments, kickbacks, bravery and overbilling, benefit fraud, workers' compensation fraud, asset misappropriation, pair of fraud, data or intellectual property thief. So we have thief of cash, stealing cash from an employer can take many forms depending on the type of business. For example, in a bar or restaurant, the cashier may simply keep the register open and not even enter the purchase. Or the bartender and the server may be working together, collecting money from the customer and simply packaging it. So to prevent this fraud, the company should train their employees to prevent fraud. Employees in fraud-prone areas of the business should know the warning signs of fraud, preventing skills and how to report suspicious behavior or action by co-workers and customers, establishing an, an anonymous reporting system or process can also set their mind at easy but about letting their bosses know about a fellow co-workers. The management, including owners of small businesses, should create a code of ethics that makes it clear that unethical behavior will not be tolerated. Second is the unauthorized billing, money transfer, and overpayments. This type of employment fraud occurs when an employee first transfer money into personal accounts, Second, inflate invoice accounts and keep the overpayment for themselves or generate false payment to themselves using the company's vendor payment system either by setting up a fake supplier and billing the company for goods and services or services not provided or by manipulating the accounts of an existing vendors. So here, the company should know your should know that employee so while every business strive to hire honest employees having a formal hiring routine even at a small business so it can help to prevent fraud background check should be performed for all staff handling cash or managing the payment or like a bank or account information from the customer as the employee's level of interaction with finance increases, it's too should to, to, to secure the pay to their past or the, pre, or the present situation. Although it seems um, the, the employees committing fraud are often found to be most endeared by their co-workers because the person will go out of their way to help and gain trust of often working long uh, longer hours or rally talking time off this result in them to handling several duties and with less oversight likewise employees facing sudden financial challenges on their personal lives that can may att uh, attempt them or temptation requiring the staff to take their vacation can all can also help to expose uh, fraud it is a occurring and also help to relieve uh, overwork and its employees so the third one is kickbacks bravery and overbillings fraud also occurs when an employee does payments or benefit for or overbills 
in exchange for providing business advantages to a company such as clients or supplier. So here, the company may also uh, have to maintain internal controls. Even small businesses need to create and maintain internal con controls that can prevent or detect fraud. A list includes restricting asset access to financial account data, um, in inventory access, establishing multi-person sign-off on expenses, reimbursements, overtime, all check writing functions, and other accounting or payroll functions, and inform and performing an overview of audit logs to ensure the integrity of books. So here, benefits fraud. Benefits fraud can be committed by an individual or by a large group of employees. It it may be as simple as a sim an employee submitting a claim for a massage or other treatment covered by the company insurance plan that they did not receive or increasing the cost of the treatment. So here uh, the company also or might do about audit of book regularly. Business should routine audit areas that deal in cash or refunds or product return or inventory management or accounting functions. So in additionally it can also help to detect fraud in high risk or critical business areas. So, uh, the ACFE offers a fraud prevention check-up to help the business identify the risk of fraud and develop control to prevent losses. Next will be the workers' compensation fraud. So, here it's very sabotable that workers' compensation frauds involve an employee exaggerating injuries or disability inventing uh, injuries that did not, not occur or claiming injuries that occurred outside of work happened at work or in order to receive compensation pay so it very sabotable that this worker compensation workers compensation fraud are those uh, injuries that did not occur in work or it happened outside the work so they or they want to receive a compensation to the company to pay to them for the exaggerating injuries that they have next will be the asset misappropriation asset mis misappropriation is the thief of company asset by an employee and can include many types of fraud such as using a company credit card used for personal use or second using other company property and equipment for personal use uh, for example those van for the government and they use it for personal use or the um, other high level of politician and use the private uh, ambulance for their personal use and there are many uh, many people doing that when ha when they have the power to do that next will forging a company uh, check Next will be altering a company check such as amount of other details. Next, thief of cash or inventory. Next, submitting false on inflate expense, expense claims. Next, using a company expenses account for personal expense and submitting them in a business expense. Lastly, personal use to company vehicles. So here, the company uh, can uh, prevent this uh, fraud by protecting the credit card information credit card fraud is in the headlines so often that some people may have become 
uh, now by the news but business of all size even the small home based in the war should part by firming separating business and personal accounts so the business funds with personal finances is not only prone to very costly errors but can expose the individual to lost fund on both side if the credit card information is breached so the company should separate accounts also makes tracking uh, businesses expenses so they can easily track the uh, business expenses business should also be worried of who they provide their credit card information and should use secure like online bills payment services when possible and eliminate eliminating uh, the potential for check fraud or thief next will be the payroll fraud payroll fraud involves an employee committing thief using the company's payroll system and can include the, the employee first keeping a non-existent employee or ex-employee on the payroll and diverting that pay to themselves second re requesting a payroll advance and not paying it back third for falsifying time sheets to inflate hours or clocking in in and out for another employee in their absence or annually inflating hours on an employee's time sheet so mostly some of the employee uh, asking a favor for their co-workers to sign in their name and out when they when they are absent so it is a uh, under for payroll fraud. Lastly, will uh, lastly will be stealing another employee's paycheck and cashing it. So the company can also easy to review account activity and statement whenever the whenever is convenient and business management should do this frequently to make to make sure that paper based statement in this of 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 their office have not been manipulated so they must do the business bank account uh, business uh, bank account checking the key items to look or the missing the missing amount or check out the checks or unknown payment receipt or check that were signed over the third party instead of deposit of the business account simply letting staff know that review check activity is part of the accounting review process that can help prevent fraud so the company should ha assign someone to check the the logbook of the company. Third verb. Next will be data or intellectual property thief. It is also considered fraud when an employee steal data or trade secrets called intellectual property from their employee and this can include an, an employee stealing proper proprietary information to steal or to sell to a competitor second copying or downloading list of the company's contract to use or sell third stealing and sharing credit card numbers client list or other valuable personal identif identifiable information to sell to others so if you have discovered that 
uh, that you are also a victim of fraud, it is a good idea to contact a fraud recovery expert for advance. So here, segregate accounting duties because any size of company or many also small businesses have one person that always handle bookkeeping function as a client receivable processing client payments paying invoice managing pt cash and recording this function in their account system this make it easy to case to, for cases of fraud to go unnoticed so the business should have at least two person handling this function interchanging this uh, process can also help to determine who is the employee fraud or who or who is the person involved So lastly, check into every case. So if you have set up fraud pre prevent step and reporting procedures, but you don't allow through by looking into reports or suspicious, then you're defeating your own security. In order to in reinforce the business policy of no tolerance for unethical behavior, each case should be looked at regardless of size so you ha you can also get a expert help a business has implement fraud prevention step and the numbers still aren't adding up or when there are large legal uh, implication it may be prudent to hire a professional accountant to come in and perform a more extensive review and audit of the business books and control processes. CPAs and certified fraud examiner can provide extensive help in fraud detecting and prosecution if necessary. So that's all for my report and other reporter will report their topics. Thank you. In this video, I will be discussing about the applying fraud auditing standards. This topic gives a brief introduction to some key definition and explanation regarding fraud and errors. I will also discuss the responsibilities of auditor regarding to fraud and errors. So, responsibilities on fraud and error prevention. Auditor's responsibilities regarding fraud is to obtain reasonable assurance that the financial statement or FS taken as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether caused by fraud or error. The management has also responsibility regarding the fraud, primarily for the prevention and detection of fraud that rests with both those charged with governance of the entity and management also create a strong culture of ethics, placing a, an emphasis on fraud prevention. The auditor has responsibility to plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable assurance that whether the financial statement are free from material misstatement, whether caused by error or fraud, because of the nature of audit evidence, and the characteristic of fraud, the auditor is able to obtain reasonable but not absolute assurance that material misstatements are detected. The auditor has, the, has no responsibility to plan or perform the audit to obtain assurance that misstatements, whether caused by errors or fraud, that are not material to FS, are detected. Next, distinguishing between fraud and error. So, what is fraud and what is error? 
accordingly, an error is an intentional misstatement of the financial statement, whereas fraud is intentional. For fraud, there is distinction between misappropriation of asset and fraudulent financial reporting. When you find misstatement as you perform an audit, you are responsible for making an assessment. You alone must determine you alone must determine whether the misstatement is an error or a fraud. Um, errors are not deliberate, but yet fraud takes place when you find evidence of intent mislead. So remember uh, or keep in mind that that a small amount of a misstatement doesn't make difference if the intentional misstatement is material or immaterial. Fraud is fraud. Um, example for an error is inadvertent taking an expense to wrong to wrong account. For example, an advertising expense shows up as an amorti uh, shows up as an amortization expense. The two accounts are next to each other in the chart of account, and the and the data clerk made a simple keying error. So it's not intentional. So it's an error. Next is assessing the risk of fraud and risk ass assessment procedure. So basically, a fraud risk assessment is a tool used by, man by management to identify and, and understand risk to its business and weaknesses in controls that present a fraud risk to organization. So once a risk is identified, a plan can be developed to mitigate, to mitigate this risk by institutions by instituting controls or procedures and assisting individuals to, men, to monitor to monitor the um, the affected plan of miti of mitigation the risk assessment procedure the audit procedures performed to, uh, to understand to obtain and understand understanding of the entity and its environment including the entity's control to identify to identify and assess the risk of material misstatement whether due to fraud or error at the financial statement and assertion and assertion levels and the company's internal controls to identify and assess the risk of material misstatement of financial statement, whether due to fraud or error. Next is professional skepticism and due care. So due professional care is to exercise in the planning and performance of the audit and preparation of the report. Um, the, mistake, the statement in the preceding paragraph requires the the independent auditor to plan and perform his or her, her work with due financial care. Due financial care emphasizes a responsibility upon each professional with, with an ind independent auditors or the external auditor, auditors in an organization to observe the standard of failed work and reporting. And number five is the characteristics of fraud. So typically, management and employees engage in fraud will take, take steps to conceal the fraud from the auditors and others within and outside the organization. Fraud may be consoled uh, by withholding evidences or misrepresenting information in response to inquiries or by falsifying documents. Fraud is also be consulted through collusion among, among management, employees, or third parties. Collusion may cause the auditor who has 
properly performed the audit to conclude that evidence provided is persuasive with it is in fact false. So that's all. Panagdait everyone, I am Rachel Inso, and in continuation to Humawan's report, allow me to discuss to you the six remaining subtopics in applying food auditing standards. Number six, staff discussion of the risk of material misstatement due to fruit. This means that the discussion among the key engagement team members about the potential for material misstatement due to fraud should occur with an attitude that includes a questioning mind and the key engagement team members should set aside any prior belief they might have that management is honest and has integrity. Basically, the discussion among the key engagement team members should include first an, in an exchange of ideas or brainstorming among the key engagement team members, including the engagement partner, and they will talk about how and where they believe the company's financial statements might be susceptible to material misstatement due to fraud how management could penetrate and conceal fraudulent financial reporting, and how assets of the company could be misappropriated. In fact, through brainstorming, the key engagement team members will generate ideas about how fraud might be committed and concealed at the entity. Second, a consideration of the known external and internal factors affecting the company. This is important to consider, for this might create incentives or pressures for management and others to commit fraud. It may also provide the opportunity for fraud to be perpetrated and indicate a culture of environment that enables management to rationalize committing fraud. Third is a consideration of the risk of management override. This is also required a consideration for management may override controls to intentionally misstate the nature and timing of revenue or other transactions by recording fictitious business event or transactions or changing the timing of recognition of legitimate transactions, particularly those recorded close to the end of an accounting period. Lastly, a consideration of the potential audit responses to the susceptibility of the company's financial statements to material misstatement due to fraud because it is the need to maintain a questioning mind throughout the audit to exercise professional skepticism in gathering and evaluating evidence. Number seven, obtaining the information needed to identify the risk of material misstatement due to fraud. This means that the auditor should obtain knowledge about the entity's business and the industry in which it operates. To identify the risk of material misstatement due to fraud, the auditor should perform the following procedures. First is to make inquiries of management and others within the entity to obtain their views about the risk of fraud and how they are addressed. It is important because fraud often is, considered, is uncovered through information received in response to inquiries. One reason for this is that such inquiries may provide individuals with an opportunity to convey information to the auditor that otherwise might 
not be communicated. Therefore, making inquiries of others within the entity may be useful in providing the auditor with a perspective that is different from that of individuals involved in the financial reporting process. Second is consider any unusual or unexpected relationships that have been identified in performing analytical procedures in planning the audit. This means that the auditor should perform analytical procedures relating to revenue with the objective of identifying unusual or unexpected relationships involving revenue accounts that may indicate a material misstatement due to fraudulent financial reporting. Third is consider whether one or more fraud risk factor factors exist. Because fraud is unusually because fraud is because fraud is usually concealed, material misstatement due to fraud are difficult to detect. Hence, the auditor should use professional judgment in determining whether a risk factor is present and should be considered in identifying and assessing the risk of material misstatement due to fraud. Last is consider other information that may be helpful in the identification of risk of material misstatement due to fraud. For the for it is important to consider for the auditor should consider whether identified inherent risk would provide useful information in identifying the risk of material misstatement due to fraud. Number eight, assessing the identified risk and re responding to the results of the assessment. This means that the auditor should use his or her knowledge of the company and its environment as well as information from other risk assessment procedures to determine the nature of the inquiries about risk of material misstatement. And in identifying and assessing risk of material misstatement, the auditor should first identify risk of misstatement using information obtained from performing risk assessment procedures and considering the characteristic of the accounts and disclosures in the financial statements. Second, evaluate whether the identified risk relative pervasively to the financial statement as a whole and potentially affect many assertions. Third, evaluate the types of potential misstatements that could result from the identified risk in the accounts, disclosures, and assertions that could be affected. Fourth, assist the likelihood of misstatement, including the possibility of multiple misstatements and the magnitude of potential misstatements, to assess the possibility that the risk could result in material misstatement of the financial statements. If identify significant accounts and disclosures and the relevant assertions, and last, determine whether any of the identified and assist risks of material misstatement are significant. In addition, it also helps to consider whether the identified risks are related to either specific accounts or transactions or to the financial statements as a whole. Once you can link the identified risk to a specific account, you then can design and perform more effectively effective procedures. And when assessing information about potential fraud risk, you should consider the type, significance, likelihood, and pervasiveness of the risk. Number 9. Evaluating the audit evidence. Audit evidence is evidence obtained 
by auditors during a financial audit and recorded in the audit working papers. Auditors need audit evidence to see if a company has the correct information considering their financial transaction so as a CPA can confirm their financial statements. Therefore, the audit evidence documents give you the substantiation for your prof for your professional audit opinion. And when performing an audit, you must assess the niche for competence, sufficiency, and valuation of the audit evidence to determine its accuracy. In fact, to be appropriate, audit evidence must be both relevant and reliable in providing support for the conclusions on which the auditor's opinion is based. Number 10. Communicating about fraud to management, the audit committee, and others. This means that audit team members are required to communicate with each other throughout the engagement about the risks of material mis misstatement due to fraud. Because communicating or collaborating each other help the auditor to generate creative and practical ideas in resolving the issues. In fact, the standard requires the auditor with final responsibility for the audit to determine whether there has been appropriate communication among team members throughout the engagement. Therefore, Communication among others is important. Number 11. Documenting the auditor's consideration of fraud. So why do we need to do audit documentation? We need to do audit documentation is it because audit documentation facilitates the planning, performance, and supervision of the engagement. And it is the basis for the review of the quality of the work because it provides the review with written documentation of the evidence supporting the auditor's significant conclusions. Besides, when the auditor identifies broad risk factor with control implications, he or she must consider whether they represent reportable conditions that should be reported to management and the audit committee. Thus, the, audit, thus the auditor should document in the work papers the assessment of the risk of material misstatement due to fraud. The auditor should document the following. First, the discussion among engagement personnel in planning the audit regarding the susceptibility of the entity's financial statement to material misstatement due to fraud, including how and when the discussion occurred, the audit team members who participated, and the subject matter discuss. Second, the procedures performed to obtain information necessary to identify and assess the fraud risk. Third, the document is the fraud risk that were identified at the financial statement and assertion levels and the linkage of this risk to the auditor's response. Next is if the auditor has not identified in a particular circumstance improper revenue recognition as a fraud risk, the reasons supporting the auditor's conclusions. Next is the result of the procedures performed to address the assist fraud risk, including those procedures performed to further address the risk of management of right of controls. And lastly, the nature of the communication about fraud made to management, the audit committee, and others. So, those are all the needed information to document in auditor's consideration of fraud.